Okay, this will be the first video tutorial. Um, this is going to be a tutorial on ripping video clips from DVDs using DVD Shrink 3.2. You can go on to use the video clips to make compilation DVDs, uh, to share video clips you know, using FileServe or some kind of server website. But the first step for any of that is to first get the clip ripped from the DVD in question and get it onto your PC desktop or whatever folder you choose to save it in on your PC. So, like I said, we'll be using DVD Shrink 3.2. That's the version I have. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a free software. I'll provide a link down at the bottom and in the forum. Um, I already have a DVD in my drive, so we're going to open up DVD Shrink here. Now, there's a couple of a couple of different options here. Up on the toolbar, we have Open Disk, Open Files, Full Disk, and Reauthor. For the time being, we only need Open Disk, Open File, as if the file is already on your hard drive. But we're we're using a DVD in the drive, so we're going to go to Open Disk, and this little menu pops up, and it gives you the option to select which DVD drive, should you have multiple drives on your computer, which one you want to pick. Mine's Drive D. The DVD in is a PWG show, DDT4, 2011. This is the volume information that, that's been encoded on the disk when it was authored. So I know that this is the one I want to open. I'm going to hit OK. And it opens up. We have a viewfinder right here, a view screen, with play, stop, uh, scrub. If you double-click on the screen right here, it'll go into full screen. You hit escape, it'll go back. You can do that while it's playing. That comes in handy so you can check and see you know, what clip you're working with at the moment. We have the left window pane, which I consider the editing window pane. We have the right window pane, which I'll consider like the information window pane. And we have, <clears throat> right now we have PWG DDT4 2011 in there, as we knew. And underneath the DVD itself, there's going to be the file information for how the DVD is built. There's a menus. Um, folder, there's a main movie folder, there's unreferenced material. The unreferenced material is really inconsequential. It's extra garbage that you don't need to worry about. The menus we really don't need to worry about. There, it comes in handy if you need to see um, something on the menus, what page, but we're not going to be using that for now because we're ripping the video file. We don't need the menu information. So we're going to be dealing with main movie stuff. So we're going to highlight the DVD title here, and we're going to click Reauthor. Re and what that'll do is it'll move the DVD into the right pane here, the information pane, and it'll give you two different headings here. We have Menus and Main Movie. Like I said, we don't really need to worry about Menus. Uh, I'm under the DVD Browser tab. That's default, by the way. We're going to be focusing on Main Movie heading, which you can see a couple of different things here depending on the DVD that you put in. This DVD happens to be built as one long video file. <clears throat> so we have Title 1, 2 hours, 47 minutes, 26 seconds, uh, about, four and a half uh, about 4 and a half gigabytes. Another option you may see is if it's broken down into separate video clips, you might see Title 1, Title 2, Title 3, Title 4, and they might be 15 minutes, 25 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever. Doesn't really matter. You can use those individually. You can use this. We're going to be trimming the clip to, exact, to use exactly what we need here in just a second. So all you need to know is that you take the video clip, whichever one, contains the video that you're looking to to extract and you just click and drag it over into the right pane or you can double click it it'll have the same effect into the uh, left pane rather so now it's in the left pane which is the editing pane 
Um, we can highlight the title here, and you want to make sure the title's highlighted, not the DVD. So we hi highlight the title, and we go to this little button right here, which says Set Start and End Frames. It looks like two arrows pointing at each other. Go ahead and click that, and it it does exactly what it says it does. We can trim the clip, meaning we can set the start frame. If we wanted to set it to 31 minutes, and we set the end frame, we want to set it to 45 minutes. That'll leave us with a clip going from 31 minutes, 23 seconds, to 45 minutes, 8 seconds. Nice piece of information here is the total clip size, 13 minutes, 45 seconds, which is 15 frames. And we click OK. And now, again, you can check the the view screen here, and it'll it now updates with the exact clip that you have trimmed, so you can tell and make sure that it, A, it's the right clip, B, it starts at the right time, it ends at the right time. Once you've figured out or or verified that this is the correct clip that you want to rip to your your computer we're just gonna go ahead and hit back and make sure that the title is still highlighted and sometimes the DVD gets highlighted we want to make sure that the title is still highlighted we're gonna go ahead and hit back up so when we hit back up we get this menu screen I don't bother with any of these tabs here just the first one target device <coughs> pardon me target device we're going to select backup target. It should say hard disk folder because that's what we're, we're saving to is a, a folder on the hard disk. The other thing is select target folder for DVD output files. For our purposes here, we're just going to pick desktop. So this is the path to my desktop, C drive, document settings, James, desktop. We're going to add a folder that says um, test rip and that's going to be backslash test rip and you could title this anything you want you title it the name of the clip would probably be the best bet so we also want to check that create video TS and audio TS subfolders are is checked sometimes this button isn't here on different versions of 3.2. It happens to be here on mine. If it's not there, don't worry. I think it, it's automatic if it's not there. But if you do see it here, just make sure it's checked. And we'll hit OK. So it's, it's going to scan the clip. <clears throat> and this will take about a minute. And as you see here, it's building a test rip folder onto my desktop, which is the path that we set for it. So since it's only, a, I mean, we're about at half a minute now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna edit this part out, I'll just let it run through. About five seconds left. All right, and then when it's finished, you get a little backup complete box pop-up says DVD shrink has finished backing up your DVD all output files are now ready for burning with appropriate DVD burning software which I will set up a tutorial for in the near future DVD output files were saved to the following location uh, which is desktop test rip and then some other information you know total size and total processing time you really don't need we're gonna go ahead and hit OK you can redo more. What I always do is I delete the last one and start over so I don't confuse myself. You can do as many as you like. Just name them different files and they're going to end up right here on your desktop. So we have test rip and that's got a video TS, audio TS file in it. And on the next few tutorials I will show you what you can do with those um, video TS files.